In this video, we're going to uh, explore Stack. Stack is a structure, data structure, that is used uh, across all kinds of processors. Um, and uh, as the name implies, it's Stack is a concept of stacking a bunch of uh, inf uh, information on top of each other. And, and, and the name comes because Stack behaves like if you were to write something on a piece of paper and put it in a uh, and stack them on top of each other, you only would be looking at the very top item on the stack. So, so as the name implies, stack uh, the way we draw it. Also, we draw it usually like this. So, if somebody were to draw a stack, they would draw it as a if think about it as a box, if you will. And every time you write something, it sits here. Write a new thing, it sits in here. Write a new thing, it would sit in here. So stack is a collection of items. In our particular case, the content of stack, so this is a stack, the content of stack is PC. So PC is the program counter. At any given point of time, you put the program counter in there. So when you look here, this might be, 0x296 or this might be 0x3720 or 0x4562 okay now th this is a stack each one of these items is basically a program counter okay now we know that this particular processor can address up to two megabyte. Therefore, the PC has to have 21 bit, bit 20 to bit zero. And since these are the, this, this information has to be kept, the, the minimum number of bytes, we can go sub byte, but the minimum number of bytes we need to store this information is three bytes. Okay. And the least significant byte is called, the least significant byte is called top of stack, um, lower, top of stack, higher, high, low, high, and top of stack, upper. So those are the three bytes. Each one of these are a byte. So for example, in this particular case, the top of stack is the last item up here. Remember the analogy. It's a piece of paper. On each paper, you wrote the address of the instruction or the PC and then put the next one on top, put the next one on top. So if I've got three, in this case, I've got a three pieces of paper on top of each other. The only visible one is the one at the very top and it's referred to, the one at the very top is referred to as top of stack. And that's the only one you are visible to you. Okay. And then, and then what, and what is in there is a PC. If I want to see something below it, I have to get rid of the top of stack. And there are multiple ways of getting rid of it. And we'll talk about that as well. If you get rid of it, then top of stack would move to the next one and the values will be there. So for example, right now, the way we have it, top of stack is way up there. So what we're going to say, we're going to set this byte, the top of stack lower, will have a 62 hex in it. The next one is going to have 0, 4, 5 in it. So what? guess what's going to be in here? In here, we're going to have 0, 0. Okay. And um, so that's pretty much as far as the st stack is concerned. The so stack is a data structure concept built into the microprocessor and it allows us to stack PCs on top of each other and allows us to peel them off one at a time. And the only thing we know is that only the top of stack is visible to us. If we want to go look to see what's on top of stack, if we need to do that, there are three special function register, SFR, that you can read to figure out what the top of stack look like. Each one of them will carry uh, four of them. Now there is also, so, so how many, so the next question is how many of these can I stack on top of each other? You can start the first location as not actually zero, in this case it's actually one, 
top, the highest number you can have is 31. So you can have a total of 31 items in your stack, and that's the maximum. And there is another SFR register. It's referred to as stack. The name of the SFR register is a stack pointer. And I would encourage you to go back to Datasheet and look to see exactly what the address of these locations are, where they are in relation to other instructions, other registers as well. So in this particular uh, byte, it's called the stack pointer byte, we have an indication of where the top of stack is. For example, in this particular case, top of stack is at number three. You see that? So therefore, we're gonna have here three, which is one, one, and it's gotta be, this is bet zero to bet four, so I have zero, one, two, three, and four. So that tells me that the stack one, this one is not used, typically the ones that are not used come back as a zero, but anyway, you don't care. And since it's, if it's empty, this would be a one. It is not empty, it's got three items in it, so that would be a zero. It's not full. If you had all 31 of these filled up, then you would have a one in this bet, but they are not full. So the stack pointer will have this value, which is zero three in the stack, uh, in, in hex. In hex, uh, the value is zero three. So if, if at some point we have a conversation about the stack pointer is that, that's the stack pointer. Great, so now just, just to recap, we know stacks are like stacks of paper. Each, each item in the stack has the PC in it, which is 21 bits, and basically is address of an instruction in memory. And then, and, or, or points to a program memory, if you wanna think about it that way. In this particular example, we have three items in the stack. The one at the very top is called top of stack. If you want to read it, there are three SFR registers that give you the lower byte, the middle byte, and the higher byte. And then if you want to know general status of your stack pointer, this is a good place to go. For example, if you want to add something to the stack, it's probably a good idea to make sure it's not full. If you're trying to take something off a stack, it's probably a good idea to make sure it's not empty. And then this will tell you basically where the stack pointer is pointing. In this case, it's pointing at three. Okay. Now the next question is, what are the instructions that uh, make changes to the stack? We have two of them. One is called the pop, one is called the push. Let's go ahead and work on the push first, and then we're going to come and talk about pop. As the name implies, as the name implies, a push is putting one more item on the stack. Uh, so let's let's um, let's start with the new stack. Let's say we start this um, uh, this thing and we've got a stack we start with a stack that has got a couple of items on it let's say it's got 0x940 0x621 0 okay this is the stack as as it stands then we come and let's say we execute something called um, the, the uh, some program that is running and this program is at 0x120 address and the program is move wf 0x80 then at 122 it says push and now the question is how is this program going to change that we're going to go read that it basically says when you get a push instruction you do there's no operand you don't have to give it any operand all it's going to take is going to take the pc the location of a push whatever the location of push is in this case 122 is going to add two to it because its goal is to make it point to the next instruction and the next instruction of course is sitting at 0x one, two, four. So it's gonna take that instruction and it's gonna push it to the top of stack. So what does that mean? So it's gonna come here and it's gonna write zero X one, two, four at the top of the stack, okay? So now 
if if I were if I were to go to the special register and trying to figure out what is my top of stack, remember top of stack is got a top of stack upper, top of stack there are three bytes right that show the program a counter. So then the top of the stack. This is the top of stack. The stack pointer would be the three because it's not empty, it's not full. And the top of stack upper, top of stack high, then top of stack low bytes gonna be basically 24 for the low, one for the high, and zero for the upper, okay? So that's the, the top of stack values, and this, the push, all it does, it adds the address of the next instruction, or PC plus two to this thing, okay? Um, that is pretty much all push does, um, and and that's all there is to it. It is very rare for us to use this instruction directly, but there are some cases we want to do special things that will use it, and that hopefully we'll get to it. Now, the opposite of push is there is another instruction called pop, and pop is a way for you to get rid of what's on the top of the stack. Just get rid of it. It doesn't do anything other than strip the top of stack, throw it away, and uh, get you back to the other one. So let's let's take a look at this. So if I had a, it really doesn't matter where the address is. Let's say I have an, an address 0x900. I have a pop instruction. And if, if my, if, if I stick with this as being, as this being my, um my uh stack point uh stack uh here let's say this is the stack when this pop gets executed so all the pop is going to do is basically going to eliminate what's on the top so after pop the top of stack upper top of stack high and top of stack low will be driven by this and because this is now after the pop this is the top of stack, so I'm gonna have one, zero, six, two, zero, zero, and of course these are all hen hex. Okay. So so that's the push and the pop. Now the question is that's kind of interesting, but doesn't look like it's very useful. Uh, what we're gonna do in the next video, we're gonna recover and in, cover instructions call and return. And those absolutely rely on the stack to remember where they have to come back to. The other instruct, the other operation that really depends on stacks is interrupt, and we're going to talk about that as well in two, uh, in a couple of videos in the future. So interrupt is the uh, is the other instruction uh, interrupt uh, that would use stack and. And when we talk about that, then you see the usefulness of a stack. Just as a quick uh, summary of what we talked about is we introduced a stack and a stack is basically a way of keeping track of PCs in order. And it's basically sometimes is referred to as a first in last out because the first item that goes in is the last item to come back out because you stack everything and then you got to unstack everything to get to the bottom of it. If you ever want to look at the what's the and top of the stack is the only thing visible to you. If you want to look at it, you can go to special function register and look at upper, high, and low bytes. There is a stack pointer which tells you which which level of the stack you are at, which can be from one to thirty-one because that's all the stack can take. And then you can also have a bit that tells you whether the stack is empty or stack is full. Uh, you might say that's somewhat redundant. If I know the number, then I know the answer, but this double duplicated, yes. And then we have two instruction push and pop. One pushes the address of the next instruction to the top of the stack, and pop just simply pulls it and throws it away. And here are some examples of how you do that. And the, you, the, where we really, uh, a stack comes in handy is during the call and return, function call and function return. And then when the interrupt happens, uh, when the service interrupts, it's good to remember where to come back to. And all of that is accomplished by the stack.